Why Must I Suffer? by Father Francis J. Rimler. A Book of Light and Consolation, copyright 1923. Reasons Why You Must Suffer. Sixth Reason A Substitute for Purgatory. The sixth reason why you are visited with suffering of various kinds is this God desires to preserve you from the extremely painful and entirely unmeritorious sufferings of purgatory. Enough has been said in the foregoing section to show that you may be under obligation of discharging a heavy debt of temporal punishment. Just how much atonement you must make, we have no means of knowing. But considering the vast number of your sins and the various degrees of their guilt, you have every reason to believe that this debt is considerable. But now you must know that your penalty must be canceled to the last penny before you can be admitted to the unveiled presence of the God of infinite holiness. To make the necessary payment of this debt, two ways are open to you. If you desire, you may make it in this life. If you neglect to make it in this life, you must make it in the next. There is no other alternative. But perhaps you have often thought and even declared that you are quite willing to wait until after death and then in purgatory make all the satisfaction required of you, but that you want to be excused from making it in this life. If, unconsciously, you have entertained such sentiments, you have displayed a woeful lack of knowledge as to the true nature of purgatory. In the first place, you do not seem to know that the smallest measure of suffering in purgatory is far more intense than the severest pains on earth. The saints tell us that the intensity of the pains caused by the fire of purgatory is the same as that which is caused by the fire of hell. The only difference is this, that the souls in purgatory are consoled by the knowledge that their torment will end sooner or later, whereas the damned in hell are tortured by despair at the knowledge that their punishment will last forever. In the second place, you seem to be ignorant of the fact that the advantages of present sufferings over future ones are great beyond measure. Are you aware that in this life you can accomplish vastly more in a few hours than you could in purgatory perhaps in ever so many years? You need only attend to the following points. 1. Cultivate an ardent love of God and an abiding sorrow for all the sins of your life. For this purpose, accustom yourself to make frequent acts of the love of God and of contrition. 2. Accept all your afflictions with sentiments of profound humility in the spirit of penance, and with the conviction that only for the great mercy of God you might even now be condemned to the endless pains of hell. 3. Unite yourself continually with our Lord, dying on the cross for love of you and beg Him to accept your sufferings in union with His, as an atonement for all your sins. The more fervently you cultivate these dispositions, the more quickly will you cancel your debt of temporal punishment. In this way, you can do more in one short hour now than might be possible in purgatory in an entire century. It all depends on the fervor of your love and the depth of your sorrow for sin. In the third place, you must above all know that the sufferings of purgatory are entirely unmeritorious. This means that no matter how intensely the soul suffers there, nor how long, though it were for a thousand years, she cannot thereby procure for herself so much as a single new degree of merit by which to increase her glory in heaven. With all her pain, such a soul cannot earn for herself as much as you can by patiently bearing an insult or suffering the prick of a pen or denying yourself the pleasures of a dance or a movie or an ice cream soda. All that a soul in purgatory is able to do is to cancel by slow degrees the whole debt of her punishment, that part accepted which God in His mercy remits by reason of the prayers and good works offered for her by the faithful on earth. But as to merit, the opportunity for gaining that is gone forever. 
It ended at the moment the soul quitted the body. These considerations will surely convince you of the wonderful advantages of present over future sufferings. Whatever you endure in this life, besides its power to atone for your sins, has great efficacy for making you rich in grace and glory. Moment by moment, day by day, and year by year, you are at one and the same time canceling your debt and amassing additional claims to greater happiness in heaven. And the more numerous and painful your sufferings, the more abundant and varied will be your merits. Considered in this light, tell me, is it not a great privilege and a precious grace to have your purgatory here on earth? Picture to yourself how greatly a soul in purgatory would rejoice if God permitted her to return to earth and take up your life with its pains and labors and griefs and sorrows. How she would welcome every form of suffering and embrace it gladly and try to make the most of it for atonement and for merit, but the opportunity will never be granted. See then how unreasonable it is for you to complain and murmur against divine providence when trials and afflictions are sent to you. Revive your faith, and you will soon learn how to bless and thank God amidst even the greatest agonies of pain. You will clearly understand that it is His infinite love for you and your eternal glory that makes Him lay these crosses on your shoulders. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God.